Today I'd like to show you how I created this composite image just here. And I did so using this base image just here, and also this smoke image here, and a second smoke image just here. I got all of these images from unsplash.com, and I'll include all of their links in the description, as well as the Photoshop file here. So uh, again, I'll be showing you how I built this whole thing, but the main emphasis today is going to be showing you how I extracted the smoke from its background. So smoke one just here, how to extract the uh, luminance information essentially from this picture, because there are times when blends and masking aren't going to work for you. So just to show you uh, what I mean here, actually screen, the blend mode screen will work beautifully in this situation, but there's going to be times when it won't. So I'll just show you quickly what I'm talking about. Smoke one, I've got my move tool selected just here. If I click and drag this up into dancer.jpg and drop it in here, if I come over here into my layers panel and I change the blend mode to screen, you can see that pretty much has got us exactly where we need to be. Now there's a little bit of color information there that we would need to extract or rather remove, but that's pretty much all we need. But again, in this situation, this was achieved by using the screen blend mode and I want to show you how we can actually get around that. So I'm just going to delete that layer and pop over into the smoke one image just here. So let's have a quick look at the information within this image because we've got our info panel just down here. If I scroll the mouse through this image, you can see wherever I hover over part of the image, it's giving us RGB information just down here. Now it's very important that the black areas are black because when we extract the luminance information using the channels panel in just a minute, anything that's white is going to be perfectly selected. Anything that's black is perfectly not selected. And any shades of gray in between are going to represent in between levels of transparency. So in these areas, which should be nothing, we need them to be nothing. And the way we do that is we make sure everything is a perfect black. So again, as I'm scrolling through here, I can see, for example, the numbers one, uh, the, the number one is popping up here in RGB. And just over here, we see occasionally some numbers uh, like the twos, for example. So this is very close to black. It's actually much more obvious in this smoke image, smoke two image just here, where I'm dragging around here and I can see twos and threes. So I just wanna show you how we can quickly fix that before we try and extract the information. So what we're going to do is over here in the layers panel, create a curves adjustment layer which has popped up just here. And what I'm going to do is drag this point just here across a few units just here. So what that's doing is it's essentially making anything that's a very close to black, but not quite black. And we're gonna be clipping that, making them a pure black. So now if I just click away here and if we keep an eye on the info panel just here, if I drag around these black areas now, they are indeed just that a pure black. And let's pop over into smoke too, and let's do that also. So. Let's create a new channel, excuse me, a, a new curves adjustment layer that is. Getting a little ahead of myself just there. Let's drag that across a little bit. It's probably more than I need, but that should be fine. Again, I'm clicking away and then keeping an eye on the info panel and that's perfect. Anywhere I drag my mouse now, RGB is showing up as zero. So that's fantastic. So let's pop back into smoke one and let me show you how we can now extract this information. So if we pop over into the channels panel just here, we've got RGB, and then we've also got the individual channels red, green, and blue. And you can see if I click on them, the actual image changes ever so slightly here because the information in each of these three channels, while extremely similar, it's not exactly the same. So that's explaining why there's a little bit of color in our composite image just here, which we see when all the channels are actually shown just here. So the way guys we actually load the luminance information here from a channel is by holding down the command or the control key and clicking on one of these four channels just in here. Now, if I command or control click on the RGB channel here, it's loading the luminance information for the entire image. However, I could actually load the luminance information for individual channels. So keep a very close eye on the selection just through here. And if I click on command or control click on R, uh, red and then green, and then blue, you can actually see that that actually changes ever so slightly. So again, only slightly because these channels are almost identical inside of this image just here. So I may as well just go for the composite image just here. So I'm gonna command or control click on the RGB channel just here. 
And although it looks like only a tiny area is selected, that's just showing the area that's uh, marked by a 50% luminance selection. So in other words, there's a lot more selected here, but we just can't see it. But don't worry, everything's great. So with that selection made, I'm going to pop back into the Layers panel, create a new layer, and what I want to do here is simply fill that area with white. So I'm going to go up to my Edit menu, Fill, Fill with White. Choose OK. Now you don't see a lot change just out here, but I'm going to add a black layer just behind this in a moment so you can see what's going on. Let's deselect this. So select, deselect. And I'm just going to create a new layer just below our smoke just up here. And let's just fill that with black. So fill that with black just so you can see what's going on just here. And there you go. So up here, and I'll just call this uh, smoke one. So if I turn that off and on, and now if I turn off all of the other layers, you can barely see it. You can just see the white against the transparency, but our smoke one layer now has our smoke extracted from the background, which is fantastic. Now guys, one thing to also be aware of is you might be actually tempted to make a mask. Once you've loaded that selection, you may be tempted to load it as a mask or make a mask from that selection. Don't do that because what happens is if you do, you're actually going to be including elements of the black from the background. We just want pure white and it's various levels of transparency. The way we do that, again, is by popping into the channels panel, command or control, clicking on RGB, and then popping into the layers panel, create a new layer, and then just simply fill that with white. So we don't actually need any of these other layers, but I'll just leave them there for now. And let's just pop into smoke too, and let's just repeat that process super quickly. So let's pop into the channels panel, command or control, click on the RGB channel, go back into the layers panel, create a new layer, then edit, fill, fill with white, choose OK, and I'll just rename that smoke2, and select, deselect, and just to prove everything worked fantastically again, let's create just a new layer, edit, fill with black this time and sure enough there it is just there so smoke too if i turn that off and on fantastic we've got exactly what we need and if we turn off all the other layers there it is just there we can see that wispy white against the uh the wispy white excuse me against the transparency just there so there's smoke two and there is smoke one fantastic guys so at that point we're pretty much ready to go well we've achieved what we wanted to mainly achieve here which was to extract something from its background but let me show you quickly now how I actually built this little composition here. So if we, we're going to be using Dancer here as our base image. So let's pop in the Smoke 1. And if I want to drag this into Dancer, again, I grab the Selection tool, the Move tool, just drag that up to the Dancer panel, Dancer tab, bring that back in and release. And there it is just inside of there. Now what we're going to do is we want to be resizing this so I'm going to turn it into a smart object. The main benefit of doing that is, of course, if we transform this radically up and down and left and right and do lots of crazy things, we're not going to lose any quality. So if I right mouse click on Smoke 1, convert to Smart Object, we're now free to transform this at will and we're not going to harm those pixels in any way. Let's go and uh, grab Smoke 2 as well. So here's Smoke 2. Let's drag that into our Dancer image. Drop that in, and again, let's turn that into a smart object. Okay, so let's uh, have a bit of a look at my final original image just here. So you can see there's Smoke 1 and there's Smoke 2, both are smart objects. So really at this point, all I'm doing is going to, uh, I'm just going to transform them, so resize them a bit, and then apply a little bit of masking to them. So back here in our Dancer image, let's turn off Smoke 2. Smoke 1, I'm going to press Command or Control T to transform. And I can drag this in. And again, depending upon which version of Photoshop you're in, you may need to use the Shift key if you wish to distort this. So again, guys, I'm not going to match this completely. I just want to show you roughly what I was doing. So I can resize this a little bit. Now, if you don't want to uh, just scale it the way I was doing there, if you want to actually move individual corners, you notice if I grab one, I can't change that. But if I hold down the Command or Control key, I'm then free to actually move an individual corner, which is what I can do just here 
like so. Okay, and let me just get it very roughly in place and I'm just going to press return to apply that and that's already looking pretty good. So if I look over at my um, final image, you can see smoke too, I've got a little bit of that going up around near the hand just there. So if I pop back into Dancer, let's turn off smoke one, turn on smoke two, command and control T to transform and then we can just move this into wherever we like. So I had it something like that. I was looking to get those rings going around the, uh, the hand just there. And press return to commit that. So um, you'll notice that I've got some very strong hard edges there, which I obviously don't want. The way to get rid of those is with a little bit of masking. So let's, uh, with smoke one selected, pop down to my mask, add layer mask button just here. Click on that. Now I want to get a nice fuzzy black brush and I'm going to start painting out some of these hard edges. So I'm just pressing B to jump to my brush tool and I want to make sure I've got black selected just down here, which I do. So there we got black, very nice, okay. I'm pressing my right uh, bracket key, the right square bracket key. So you can go up and down in terms of size. And then if you hold down the shift key and press those same buttons, you can change the fuzziness. And you can see that fuzziness just changing up here as well. So if you go to this um, option just up here, guys, you've got your size and your hardness just there. So I've got a nice fuzzy brush. Make sure my mask is selected and we're going to paint just up here. And there we go, that's fantastic. Now you can see I've got a nice little hard edge just down there. Another thing you might want to try, you don't have to necessarily hit this with a full opacity brush. You can drop that opacity down. So I've got roughly 50% here and I'm going to reduce my brush size a little bit and then I can just paint this out in multiple multiple sweeps just here to clean up some of those hard edges. And let's uh, say turn off smoke one, turn on smoke two, apply a bit of a uh, mask again, make sure that mask is selected, which it is. And then I can just um, paint out areas that I don't want. And of course, if I paint something out that I want to bring back, I'm just going to switch to um, white. So I'm just going to switch those colors. So I've got my foreground color as white now. So any areas that I paint will actually bring that information back. So that's pretty much it there, guys. So again, here's my final image just here. And that's the one we were working on just here. Excuse me, I'll turn on smoke one again. Oh, one other thing to remember, guys, is uh, you can also change the opacity of the layer as a whole. So if I go back to my final image just here, you can see that smoke one, the layer is at a full opacity, but smoke two is actually at 80%. So that's it, everyone. Thank you for listening.